In this video, I'm going to talk about appearance in Illustrator and the importance of the appearance panel. First, what do we mean by appearance? Well, these three shapes or objects are simple paths. If I view the document in outline mode, you can see the underlying structure of those paths. The appearance, then, is the fill and stroke attributes of those objects. That is, the red fill in the star, the orange in the circle, and the blue gradient in the square. Each of these objects also has a stroke applied to its path, and in the case of the star, the stroke weight, or width, is thicker. So even if I change any of the fill or stroke attributes, and as of CS4 I can make those changes directly in the appearance panel, the underlying structure, that is the paths, remains the same. So alright, that's pretty basic, so what's the big deal about the appearance panel? You can tell just by looking at these objects what their appearance is, right? Well, the appearance panel is much more useful than that. In fact, I think it's one of the most essential and powerful panels in Illustrator, and we'll be using it a lot throughout this course. The appearance panel is kind of like the secret decoder ring in Illustrator. I can select an object and know everything about it by looking at the appearance panel. So for example, the circle on the left has a fill of orange and a six-point stroke of black. The one on the right is identical, isn't it? Actually, no, it's not. This circle has a 12-point stroke, but the stroke in this case is underneath the fill. And since by default, Illustrator places a stroke right in the center of a path, so in this case, six points on either side of it, this circle looks like it has a six-point stroke, but actually we're only seeing half of it, since the rest is underneath the fill. So you can start to see that the appearance panel is invaluable in deconstructing the appearance of these objects. Let's say you get a file from someone else, and for whatever reason, that person decided to apply all of their strokes in this way. And if you were trying to change the width of the stroke, you could get easily confounded by this if you didn't have the appearance panel open to see what was going on. This looks like three or maybe four circles stacked on top of one another. As we'll see in upcoming videos, it's possible to apply multiple appearance attributes to a single object. If I view this in outline mode, you can see that it's a single path. And if you look at the Appearance panel, you can see that there are actually two different fills and two different strokes applied to this one path. The order in which these attributes are stacked changes the look of the circle. So if I drag this dark red stroke to the bottom, for example, it changes the overall look of this object. It's also possible to apply different effects to the same object. So these fills have scribble effects applied to them, and I can turn those on or off for different looks. I hope you have an inkling of how important the appearance panel will be when using live effects. To learn more, you can go to Vector Tuts and find lots of tutorials that use the appearance panel for some really cool stuff. This, for example, is a single path with several different effects applied to it. We'll be doing something like this later in the course. In the next video, we'll see exactly what's meant by a live effect, and we'll also look at the appearance panel in some more depth and see how to expand our live effects.